So today we're going to be building on what we did last session, right? Lazy fun. Um, I'm going to give a five minute overview of what Grasshopper is and how to use Grasshopper, okay? But so you can maximize your benefit from the session, you should go back to the recording from the last workshop and have a look again, right? Um, it's pretty, pretty straightforward, guys. So Grasshopper is a plugin for Rhino where you um, where you model through nodes and wires, and then you connect them together to generate geometries and manipulate geometries, okay? Um, so this is the basic interface. Today we're gonna be looking at plugins for Grasshopper, right? So plugins, you can think of them as um, packages of developed instructions. So we talked, we talked about one node being an instruction, right? Think about a plugin as, um, ready available scripts for you to use, right? Instead of coding them from scratch, that you can access and, and download, yeah? And include in, in Grasshopper, right? So, there's a few things. I wanna talk about Ladybug first. And then we all have to install Ladybug, right? So the university machines don't have Ladybug in them, and your personal machines, unless you've already installed Ladybug, don't have them in them as well, okay? So we'll go through that together. And they'll also give you an idea of how to install other plugins in the future, okay? So I'll show you how to access the website, go to the Rhino, and have to follow the instructions. Okay. okay. So lesson breakdown again. Recap Grasshopper 3D, Grasshopper plugins, expanding Grasshoppers as um, expanding the Grasshopper tools or functions through plugins, and talking about the uh, Ladybug plugin. Yeah. So Grasshopper 3D um, is a programming language. So again, this is a screenshot over here. Uh, we've all seen the movies, uh, Matrix, etc. all these all the different numbers flowing around that. That's called syntax programming. So basically you code through uh, instructions that are in uh, text formats. Ladybug is a visual programming interface, which means you code or you develop an algorithm based on instructions that you connect to each other, right? So in principle, they're the same, whether you use syntax, or whether you use this, right? The idea is you program, um, you program a script to help you achieve something, whether it's analyze a geometry, generate a geometry, or you know even design a diagram, okay? This is what we did last session, if you guys remember. So we developed a parametric tower with, uh, where we can parametrically control the amount of floors, uh, rotation, and size of each floor, right? And then we learned how to use box more and how to apply geometries to your facade, right? So you can see, <coughs> this is the output of using Grasshopper, is to be able to model something through relationships rather than uh, manipulating geometry directly, right? So it's not like SketchUp or Rhino where you go and you create a box and put a hole in it. You develop the relationship and then you test it in the Rhino viewport over here. Okay. So, Ladybug. A lot of the plugins for Rhino are named after animals or insects, okay? One of the most popular ones is called Ladybug Tools, okay? So under Ladybug Tools, you have an ecosystem over here. So you have Ladybug Tools as an umbrella, but you have Ladybug itself as a plugin within that umbrella, okay? So you have Ladybug, Butterfly, Honeybee, and another one that I forgot, but uh, a couple of plugins under the umbrella of Ladybug Tools. And you can see here, it links to a, an environment of other um, third-party software, right? So uh, Energy Plus helps you with energy calculations if you're analyzing building performance. Um, these are all additional software that you have to install in your computer and that Ladybug can access to do the analysis for you and help you do the analysis, okay? So again, it's an environment that you download with a lot of ready programmed scripts that you can integrate and start doing environmental analysis rather than trying to calculate the heat coming from the sun manually in your script. Right. Makes sense. Okay. And this is the kind of stuff you do, right? So it can be on a building scale, on an urban scale. Um, you do environmental analysis. That's the primary uh, aim of this, right? So things related to radiation, things related to wind, wind thing, things related to uh, sunlight and shadows. Um, Ladybugs helps you uh, analyze, analyze that in, in this plugin, okay? So the workflow, you, you have Rhino and Grasshopper on the top, 
So this is vanilla, what we did last time. We didn't use any plugins last time. It was everything native to Rhino. And through Ladybug, you'll use a file called EPW. I think it's called energy plus weather file or something like that. Yeah. So this file contains important information regarding the area you're conducting the environmental analysis for, right? So let's think about it. If you're trying to do a, analyzing a building in Manchester, Manchester will have a different climate than Rio de Janeiro, right? So it has location information, it has temperature information, it has uh, sun path information, it has uh, different types of temperatures, so dew point information, all this kind of stuff, all saved in this file, right? So anything, most, most of the plugins, or most of the nodes you'll use as part of Ladybug tools, will build on a file called EPW, right? I'll show you how to download that later. And then you can see from this analysis, combined with the geometry, you can conduct this analysis, right? So if you have an EPW file from Manchester, you'll get a completely different output if you have something from the Southern Hemisphere or something from Rio, right? So hopefully that makes sense. By the way, let's keep this, um, if there's anything that doesn't make sense, just put your hands up uh, because everything is building on the previous point, right? So if you get lost from the beginning, you're pretty much going to be lost for the rest of the tutorial, right? So if there's anything unclear, please let me know, yeah? Um, let's see if we get this to this today, right? So Ladybug is not the only plugin for... Uh, for Grasshopper, there's a lot of different plugins, right? So as a primary source, uh, you want to go to a website called uh, Foods for Rhino. So Foods, number four, Rhino. Yeah. Yes, still on, still on. Food for Rhino, and here you can see there's different applications, right? So Rhino apps are plugins you download for Rhino. There's Grasshopper apps are plugins you download for uh, Grasshopper. Okay. So a, lo a lot of ways you can extend the existing uh, tools, right? So uh, if I go here, Grasshopper apps, you know, all these are different plugins you can download, right? So you can see Pufferfish, Elephant, uh, Cockroach, Nemo, all these are different types of plugins. And if you click on them, it gives you an idea of, um, sorry, the internet's a bit slow, but it gives you an idea, a description of what this plugin does and some of the outputs, right? So if you're designing a ship, you probably want to be using Nemo, right? So it's a good resource to go in, uh, similar to uh, the SketchUp uh, warehouse in terms of extensions, right? So it's a, um, a website that contains all these plugins for you. Um, if we go by downloads, so which which plugins are downloaded the most, you'll see Ladybug is a very popular one, right? Uh, the second most downloaded uh, here. Paneling tools, the Lunchbox, Kangaroo are also very important ones. So paneling tools, this is if you're developing a facade and you want to control certain apertures and openings, you do here. Uh, Lunchbox contains some of the paneling uh, capabilities as well, but also if you want to bake geometries in different layers rather than manually bake them, you can do a Lunchbox. Ladybug environment formers, kangaroos physics. So if you're doing anything tensile or anything related to physics on a building, kangaroo is the uh, plugin for it, right? So again, there's a lot of different plugins. Have a look. You might find something interesting. And if you're exploring, exploring a certain idea in your project, so you can see which plugin will help you develop that idea further, all right? Uh, so if I go back, again, we'll see if we get to this today, but Galapagos is a genetic algorithm plugin. It's, it's a plugin, but it's already native in, in Grasshopper, so you don't have to download it. Um, but it helps, you it helps you explore iterations within a set of parameters you defined, right? So some of you will be familiar with this, uh, you might have a building where you don't know exactly where to locate or you don't know exactly how to um, uh, you know, design the circulation within it and you want to test different iterations, you'll use a plugin called Galapagos. Um, 
but you can also combine combine plugins, right? So I don't want you to think of one plugin does one thing, then another one does another thing. But let's say you have a building that you want to optimize the performance of in terms of radiation or sunlight exposure, uh, and you want to test different iterations, then you would combine ladybug and graphics, right? So there's ways to combine them. It's not one thing does one, yeah? There's it goes along. Okay. Um, and you can see here, this is an example, right? So uh, the position on the side of the massing, you can start testing a lot of different iterations. This, this represents different iterations. This is some shots of the different iterations. And you can see with the analysis, you can test which ones perform better than the others. Right. So we're going to install Ladybug. So again, if you have it on your laptop already, <laughs> You're already set up. If you're working on a universal computer or your personal computer without Ladybug installed, then just follow what I'm doing now to install it, all right? OK, so first thing, you go on Fruitful Rhino. You need to create an account. Uh, so I'll give, you, I'll give you five minutes to create an account. So hopefully, I can remember my password. So one, once you've created an account, just go on Ladybug. I don't want you just to have a look through the uh, web the page for Ladybug. Yeah? So you can all download the first one, so one point five point zero. The ones underneath are older versions, but we're going to be working with the top one, the newer version. So once once you've downloaded it, you have to unzip it because it's a zip file. So right click. Uh, extract all. Yep. It'll take a few seconds to extract. And then you double click on it like this. Open this file. And then you get these files, right? This is how you this is what you need to install the plugin. So most of the plugins you'll do in the same way. So you'll go into Food for Rhino, you'll download the file, and you open them. And then most of the time, if they've done it properly, you should have an installation instructions.txt. Okay? So if you double click on this one, it's just a text file. You can open it in Word as well. Um, and it gives you some information regarding how to install it, right? So not every plugin is installed in the same way. Some of them require you to download extra stuff. Some of them require you to just drag and drop. Some of them require you to uh, install through an installer, right? So there's different ways to install them. But You'll always find the information on the installer TXT. Yeah. Cool. So one, one way of doing it is you can just double click on installer.gh. Yeah. So GH is a Grasshopper file. GH stands for Grasshopper. And once you double click, it recognizes that you have to open it in Grasshopper. So it's opening the file in Grasshopper. Like this, it should come up straight away in Grasshopper. Yeah? Another another way of doing it is you just drag it onto. You can just drag it onto here. Yeah, that's another different method. Yeah? So, it's very convenient the way they've set this up for you, right? So we talked last time about a node having an instruction. The instruction within this node is install ladybug right so it, you initiate the instruction by giving it a true boolean right so we talked about true and false last time you just double click and what it'll do is it'll, it'll install third party software so open studio and radiance right so you should all get we recognize what this is right a panel from last week an instruction And once this is done, you can go back here and install Ladybug. So the first one installs the third party software, and this one installs Ladybug for you. Right. You, do you double click on the black button where it says false. So if it's not changing, the number two, wait for it because the first one is still running. Okay? So, so you should get this notification come up installation successful. You click OK, close Grasshopper, close Rhino. Doesn't matter, and then reopen Rhino again. Right? When you reopen, please select meters. This is not yeah. It's it's better to select meters when you're working in Grasshopper, and I'll 
basically you reduce the amount of zeros and numbers, so it makes everything faster, okay? Um, so as, as soon as you open Rhino, it's the uh, pop-up that comes up at the beginning. You can change it Rhino as well by typing in units. What's this one here? Large object meters. And then you open Grasshopper, it loads up. This time you'll notice it takes a bit longer for Grasshopper to load. It's because it's also loading Ladybug. So the more plugins you have, the longer it takes for Grasshopper to load. And then you'll find um, a plugin or a tab for Ladybug, right? So these are all the extra components we just downloaded from Ladybug that we have access to. All right, so now, now we have access to the plugin, right? So you see it only takes 10 minutes to install a plugin, right? And it gives you so many different com new uh, opportunities to work with. Okay, so first thing first, you probably always use this in in Ladybug, the one on the top left. Only just to drag it onto ca onto the canvas. Okay, here, and I want you to drag the second one underneath as well. Here, okay. these two. So the the le the two leftmost nodes in Ladybug. The two, the two on the left, right? So Lady, Ladybug download weather and EPW map. It's fine if it's red. It's red because it's expecting something and it's not getting anything, right? So you can see it's complaining on my computer as well. Okay. So, if you remember, I, I talked about an EPW file, right? So it's, and it's necessary locational and weather information for us to conduct the analysis, right? So if you hover over here, you can see the octagon with the letter X. So it's expecting a text or a string. Um, and it says text representing the URL at which the climate data resides, right? So it wants a URL for the EPW file, right? That's what it wants, okay. The one here, if you hover over, again, it's an X. It says set to true to open EPW map in a supported browser, right? So, set to true, we think about booleans, so we need a boolean toggle, bool, boolean toggle, this one here, second one. And then connect it. Yeah. And double click on true. So if, if you have a red, so this, this should show up, right? All the EPW maps in the, in the world. If your nodes are red, it means you haven't installed Ladybug correctly, right? So go back again to the installer and rerun. Right? Has anyone got red nodes? Red nodes? Right, so again, run the installer again. So close Rhino, open Rhino, run the installer again. Right, so you should all have this, right? So the, the, um, the instruction for this node is if set to true, open the EPW map, okay? The EPW map is just a website, right? So you can copy this link and open it anywhere else, right? It's nothing special about it, just a website. So the node directs you to the website, okay? And all these dots represent locations that, that you can uh, use an EPW file for, right? So if you're doing... Uh, a project in Manchester, you want to click here. Remember the other node requested the URL, right? So there's two ways of doing this. You can download the EPW file or you can link the URL. Linking the URL is usually better because you don't have to manually save and open in your ladybug, right? So what you do is copy link to dashboard, right? Copy link to dashboard. And I want you just to open it on your browser. Uh, it's not going to work because it's a zip file. Never mind. So just copy a link to dashboard. Open a panel. So double click on the canvas. Type in panel. Double click on your panel and paste. And then connect it. Yeah. Paste the link inside the panel and connect it to your weather URL. 
Sorry? You go on the website, you zoom into your location. You don't have to choose Manchester, you can choose anywhere else. And then click on the dot, it'll say copy to clipboard. So you're copying the link. So if you hover over the stats file, you'll get a location. So that's the location where you've downloaded the zip file. So by giving it the URL, it's downloaded it and it's accessed it and linked it back into your graphical. Okay? So if you hover over EPW file and connect it here, this is what you get, right? So it gets the location of the EPW file. So the next step is to go on this one, import EPW file. Okay? This one here. Okay? This one here is called import EPW. And you link the EPW file to EPW file, right? So. And then you can just open a panel and try to look at the different outputs you're having, okay? Okay, so, um, let me just double check. So here, if, if you're having a problem and you can't, it doesn't work, no matter how many times you try to install, then use the uninstaller to uninstall and install again, okay? So it cleans it up and then you can install again. If you go hit, if you type if you go on the file again, go on samples, there's already some ready-made scripts for you that you can already start to play around with and test. Okay? So if you double click on double click on ladybug, these are things you can already open, right? So I can bring this in, just double click on it. Or just drag here. Yeah, avoid double clicking, sorry. Try to drag it on your existing um, uh, canvas, because otherwise it'll open. Uh... Yeah. So it already has, already has some re ready scripts for you, right? So what we're going to be doing today is I'm going to take you behind the logic of developing one script for you then to be able to go back and understand all these different scripts, right? You can't go through everything today, but by the end of today, you'll know how Ladybug works and how you can actually use different samples or use the different ways of analysis from it, okay? So as long as you understand the logic, you can use anything in Ladybug. But these are samples for you to look at later. Yeah? Okay. Okay, so let's look at the, um, the different panels we have under this tab, okay? So we have a panel which is import, which you, this is the typical setup you'll have, pretty much, is to how to import the EPW file. You have the analyzed data, so this usually is not related to a geometry, but gives you some reading outputs, okay? Visualized data, analyzed geometry, and extras, okay? So these are the different categories you're working with. We'll start off with the first one, uh, sorry. We'll start off with visualized data, right? So, one of the best ways to use Ladybug is to work backwards, okay? So, the way, what, what do I mean by working backwards? So, let's say you want to do um, a radiation analysis of your model, okay? So, you go on radiation here, and then it requests all these different types of inputs from you, right? These inputs don't come directly from here. There's things in between, okay? Um, so that's what I mean by working backwards. So you can start bringing in 
a component and then figuring out what it needs. Okay. So there's a actually, but before before we move on, I want to show you this. I mentioned at the beginning, um, coding in Grasshopper is a visual rather than syntax way, right? So there's syntax where you type in like you see in matrix and stuff. And there's this one. So this is a visual, more interactive version, right? These, mo these modules, these nodes, are made from syntax programs, OK? So when I say ready-made code for you, it's literally someone who's gone and coded all this in syntax and enabled this to work, OK? So you're using this code already, although you're, you, can't, you don't know necessarily how to read it and how to manipulate it. If you want to be freaked out, you can go in and try to understand it, right? It's a completely different world. So everything, everything is transparent and open. So this, this is actually, Ladybug was developed by one guy, I forgot his name, I think Mustafa, Mustafa. Um, and he developed all these different codes in Python, okay? So when we're talking about Python and architecture, this is one application of it. Right? Okay, so let's, I wanna, let's keep the radiation on the side for a bit. I wanna start with, um, Visualize data, okay? And let's go with LB Sunpath, this one. Okay? So, the last tutorial we were used with a node which only has one input or two inputs, right? So, you can already see there's a lot of different inputs. But you don't have to connect all the inputs and you don't, you're not going to use all the outputs, okay? So, there's a convention that Ladybug uses, which is useful for all of you to know. If something has a right underscore, it means it's not necessary. You don't have to use it. If something has two underscores, it means it's probably best to use it. If something has a left underscore, you must use it. Okay? So you can't come up with a sun path diagram if you don't know the location where it is on the globe, right? It's a, it's a necessity. Okay? So the EPW file. It has all this different environmental information, right? So, sky cover, um, direct, uh, whatever it all means, I have no idea actually. Wind, humidity, temperature, location, right? So, you can use a panel. I think uh, most of you have done this already. You go here. It has location information. So, latitude and longitude over there, and elevation. Okay. So, the information is there. It's exported in the right format for this to read. So all you have to do is connect location to location, right? And then if you go on Rhino, you might have to zoom out. With three nodes, we have the sun path for Manchester across the year. Break, broken down into into hours, right? So for every hour of the year, you can actually calculate what the sun position is for Manchester. Okay. So the data is there. So rather next time, rather than drawing just an arrow in your site analysis um, in your site analysis uh, documents, you can have proper vector accurate geometry for sun sunlight analysis. So if it, you might have to zoom out for, for you to see it. Depends on the, your Rhino units. Or you might, have, you might have to zoom in, right? You can control the scale of this using this scale. So pretty straightforward. You hover over, expect, say, number. Sometimes, you know, sometimes this is not literal, right? So if you give it number one, it's still understands it. So that number here. So don't just be confused. Don't get confused with this expecting text to make sure you read this part well. Yeah. And you can start scaling. Maybe we want to we want to position this differently, right? So if you have a site, we can link a uh, point. You don't have to do this. I just want to show you. Set one point. I link this to center points, so we can move this around. Yeah. If you delete it, it'll just go back to the middle as a default. So, 
if we're doing an analysis or we want to visualize a certain part of a year or certain hours of the day, what we, what we need to do is to give it those, those hours or those times for it to understand, right? So, OI is hours of the year. H-O-Y-S. H-O-Y-S, yeah. Hours of the year. So you can go here. Maybe you want to start your analysis from um, whichever month, right? So these numbers you, you can you can change as you wish. Uh, from day from the sixth of April, right? From nine in the morning to June. Nine at night, so it's 24 hour format. Um, yeah. And then just get a panel out. I want you to have a look at the output, right? Yeah. So what you should get is these points, right? And this, these points represent the position of the sun during the periods you identified. Okay. Zoom out. Okay. Sorry. So analysis period. This is random. You don't have to follow the same numbers, right? So from April to July, from 6th of April to the 18th of April, from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. or 18, 24 hour format. 18 is 6, sorry, not 9, 6. We talked about vectors last week as well. So if you want to see the direction of the sun, you can connect the vector output to just a um, You don't have to follow this, I just want to demonstrate it to you. Or actually, no. Nah. But not might be. Let's do this actually. It's better. Extra points. Okay. So we can connect. So these these points here are given to us here, right? Sun points. Yeah. So the position of the sun based on the hours we've selected. And if you link all the points to 0, 0, 0, 0, which is the default output of this, you'll get the exact vector of the sun for these periods, right? 
And maybe you want to change these and play around, see what happens. Right? See? So uh, as you can guess, these are the hours of the day. So in the morning, the sun goes all the way around. And these are the position within different months, right? So in winter, you have a, a low sun. In summer, you have a higher sun. We can try a different, with a visualized data, we can try a different one. So let's go on Windrows. Yeah. Let's go on the sun, uh, sun, what, sun, uh, sorry, the um, sun path, turn it off, preview. Uh, we can turn these off as well, preview. So just by connecting these two, so data and wind direction, I can already get a, sun ro sun ro a wind rose diagram for Manchester, okay? This is not always useful for your site analysis because I don't know how you'll use this. This is a, a general wind, uh, wind diagram for Manchester, but when you, go, when you go into the sites, you have different dynamics affecting wind, right? So this does not mean your site has these direction of winds. Yeah, just to be critical about it. Sorry? Line. Yeah. So here, I just created a line. So we, we used this last time, right? So I'm going to turn this off. Just going to leave it here for you. Maybe we can use it later. Preview. Preview. So this gives us the path and gives us the position of the sun, right? So these are points, the different positions of the sun on an hourly basis based on the parameters we gave it, we've given it. And all, we, all I did was connect all these points to one point here in the middle. So it's a line. It's just this one. So the default, so construct points, the default is zero, zero, zero. So it's a point right in the middle of your space, rhino space, right? So it's just a default value, right? This point can be anywhere. So if I, if I have a point here, PT, one point. Uh, this doesn't make sense now, right? Uh, okay. This doesn't make sense, but if I connect, if I connect this to center points, then whenever I move the center points, it links it back. Okay. So now we know. Now we know what the visualized data does. So it gives us a representation of the different weather information we have in the APW file, right? This doesn't link to any, any analysis at the moment. It's just a representation. So um, some path, uh, cumulative sky matrix, so this to do with lights, etc. You can get hourly plots, monthly plots, yeah? Psycho uh, psychometric chart, so comfort levels, you can get it from here as well, okay? The analyzed geometry is where we actually have a site and we have a building and we want to analyze something about it. Okay? So, with this one, what we want to do, instead of the radiation, let's do sun, sun hours first and then we can go into the radiation. Okay? So, so if you go and analyze geometry, just click on this one, direct sun hours. Okay? So, we said everything that has a left underscore we need to provide, okay? So we need to provide the vectors. Where do we get the vectors from? Does anyone know? From the sum path, right? So we've given the sum path the hours that we want to analyze, okay? We have the vectors here. We have the vectors for the position of the sun at these different times. 
So all we do is connect vector to vector here, okay? So just a caveat, I think this is an appropriate time. Ladybug can do very intensive calculations. So get into the habit of saving it every couple of minutes. Yeah, otherwise you'll have to start again, okay? So save your file, and then to make sure you don't lose anything, okay? This has two underscores, which means it's not necessary, okay? Ge okay, we have geometry and context. This is called direct sun hours. It's this one here. Sorry, this one here. Yeah, so that's why we visualize the line, right? I just want to show you that there's actual vector information here, right? So we can turn this off. Um, we can keep the sun path for now, that's fine. Or you can turn it off, doesn't matter. Okay, so here what we want to do is build a very simple context, okay? So six or nine buildings, six, something between six and nine buildings around, and we just want another, our, our design in the middle, right? So for now, let's just have another box, right? So something mimicking an urban urban environment, right? So we can go here. Sorry? Um, so you right click and preview. Yeah? So preview turns off any geometry readings in Rhino, right? So if you have everything on, it'll look messy here, right? So it'll be very difficult to model something in Rhino when you, when you have this. So just right click, preview. Some, something like that will do. Again, it's not important. So just, just as a note here, right? The y, y axis acts as your north, okay? So that's the assumption based on this diagram. You can change the north here. I would advise you to do so. I would orient your model to the y. But if you want to change north, you change it here, right? So you give it a vector in the direction which is north. OK? So just in case you're wondering why, why it comes up this way. OK. All right, so now, as we did last week, BREP and I want you to reference all these breps here. Right click, multiple breps. that's a context goes into context and the object that we want to analyze goes into geometry. It's very clear why we need to differentiate, right? So one is to analyze and the context affects our analysis. Yeah? So if we're doing a sun, 
sunlight is fuzzy, context might block sunlight coming in, right? So that's why you use context. The object you want to study is separate from the context. Yeah? The object you want to study is what you conduct the analysis on, everything else affects it. Okay? So you can see here, we can analyze the geometry without a context because we have a left underscore in geometry. So we need the geometry to do this analysis. Although, how can you analyze something without the geometry? But you don't need the context, okay? Grid size. So, this is probably, this input here is probably um, the thing that will cause all your scripts to shut down, okay? So just be careful with grid size. So, grid size refers to the resolution of your analysis, okay? So, if you have a very... Um, small resolution, it means Grasshopper is going to try to analyze all the different pixels in your building. Yeah? So a bigger number means less resolution in terms of the analysis. Okay? So initially when you're doing the analysis, you want to start with a bigger, uh, you want to start with a large grid size and then you can minimize it. Okay? So don't start with a small grid size. So minus in meters, well, I mean minus in meters, right? So this is So my rhino is actually millimeters. I thought I did it in meters. Okay. So this is four meters. Four meters by four meters cube, right? Again, this is to teach you the principle. This is not accurate, but you, you will have accurate, scaled, proper models. Okay. So if it's four meters by more four meters, my grid size can be one thousand, right? So one thousand refers to so if this is 4 meters, it will take the 4 meters and divide it into 1,000 chunks. 1,000, 1,000, 1,000. So think of it as dividing the surface into 1,000. Um, so I can do 1,000 as a grid size. Okay? This depends on your unit. So yeah, I think 1,000 should be, should be good just to test the idea, and then we can minimize it later on. Okay. So. If you, if you go on the bubble, again, the bubble is very useful because it tells us what's missing. It says input parameter underscore sun underscore run failed to collect data. So that's the only error we have, right? So what you should do is get a Boolean, Boolean toggle and connect it. Yeah, It will turn white. But it hasn't done anything yet. Okay, <laughs> so this this is a safety mechanism for a lot of ladybug uh, tools, because I mentioned at the beginning ladybug can do very intensive calculations. Okay, you need to run a lot of them for them to run. Yeah, because otherwise anything you change will just will automatically update and it will become slow. Right. <coughs> so if you have everything set up, click on run, and then you'll get this. So, if we position it so y is north, yeah, you can already see it gives us a readout. So, this represents the amount of hours each point in our surface gets. Okay. So yellow means it gets 864 or above hours of sunlight across the year. Blue means zero, right? So if you go to the north, this will be blue down here, right? This is blue, All right? Because the sun doesn't come from the north, it comes from the south, okay? And this is in real time, right? So if you go here, if we scale this up, it'll update straight away. So we see this becomes more red, which means it's more restricted, yeah? It falls under this category a bit more, right? So if you change context or move it, it updates straight away. So you can play around with it a bit more. So you see, if I move this closer, it means it restricts the sun even more. It turns bluer. Move it here. It gets more sunlight. Okay? Is that working for everyone? Yeah? Perfect. So, the grid size, 
I mentioned that this is four meters, right? And it's going to try to divide everything into one meter because I have a thousand. So you can see here, one, two, three. This is what the grid size needs. Okay. So you can try increasing it to get more. Um, so lower number means smaller grid size, right? So instead of a thousand, I can have a hundred, which means I should roughly have rather than four, 40 here, right? Because I'm doing hundred grids. So if I, if I connect uh, grid size, it will take a bit more time because rather than analyzing this point, it's going to analyze 10 more points along here. And you see it becomes more granular. You see? Yeah? So it's a bit more seamless in terms of the readouts. Yeah? No. So it's not square by default. It's roughly a square. Okay? And that's because the output is a mesh. Okay? So I mentioned last time the difference between nerves and mesh. And I gave you the reference, uh, the book called Elements of Parametric Design. Okay? So if you go here, this is the output here, mesh. So if I go mesh, enter this, and turn this off, this is my actual, out this is my actual output here. Yeah? It's a colored mesh. So it's a geometry with colors applied to it. Okay? And if you go here, you can see the points, right? So all, so because I've increased the resolution, this is how it divided it, right? So it does the analysis for every point on the surface. So now you can understand why grid size is very important, right? So it's, it's controlling the amount of points that I analyze, I analyze the surface with. So now I have all these points. And this is the result for each point, right? So I can actually go on to, if I, if I use list item, list item, here, this here, and let's do uh, whatever, a thousand I, item, item, results. So I can go here and for each item on that surface here, right? So this is the point on the surface. I can get a readout. Yeah. So this, this point here gets 662 hours, 562 hours of sunlight. So again, I'm going to bring this back to a thousand just because I don't want it to be heavy, right? But you get the idea, right? So if I go back to a thousand, you see the amount of points are a lot lower. Yeah? So I don't need these. This is just a way to visualize and read out. Okay? But you can see here. Okay, so what, what I want you all to do is design something. Uh, you have five minutes. Design something inside of my box. Okay? Something interesting geometrically. Not too complicated. We don't want to shut it down. Okay? Just design something. You can have a hole. It can have, um, it can be wonky, it can be whatever. Just design something and put it instead of this brick. Okay? So replace the brick with your own, with your own design.
Right, have you have you got something? Just anything. Just model something right now. You can go here and just um, just have a donut if you want. That's fine. Like this. Anything you can keep it as a box. I'm just making. I'm just trying to make it more interesting, right? You can have a sphere. You can have a cylinder. You can have a pyramid. So. You can see now because we have we have points on a surface, right? This is a a general application. This is something I just googled now. I'm not saying this is an example or anything, right? But because you have points on a surface, you can control different openings, right? So whenever you see these parametric surfaces, where there's different openings, based on some sort of radiation or sunlight analysis, this is what they use, right? So they take those points and they offset a, a surface on that surface and then take it off, right? We don't have a lot of time to go through this, but I'm going to show you how to maybe position your building in an interesting way on your site, okay? Just so you know the application. One of the applications. Okay. So now, what we can do is, we can try to, let's, um, let's turn this, um, I'm going to hide this. I'm going to hide this geometry in Rhino so it doesn't distract me, right? So it doesn't exist here. I can't see it. It exists, but I can't see it. I'm going to create a vector, construct vector. Where is it now? Sorry. Vector x, y, z. I'm going to leave the z as 0. And I want a slider from, let's do minus 2,000 to uh, 2,000. OK? I'm going to copy and paste this. I'm going to give it to x and y. OK? Connect this to v. And you can see I can control a position now, right? So this is the move. I can go back and turn this off. I'm going to turn this off as well. Yeah. Does that make sense? So I have a brep, which is in Rhino, and I'm controlling its position with these two vectors here, right? Can you see that? And I'm taking, I'm moving this, so this gives me the new position with the move, and I'm connecting that to the analysis here, right? So every time I move it, you can see the mesh is changing color, right? Because of the, the light being obstructed, okay? We did this last week, so hopefully it's familiar. Yeah. So after you've done this, I want you to create a rotate node. And with, with a slider, I want you to be able to rotate the building 360 degrees. Okay? A rotate node, I want you to be able to rotate the building 360 degrees. So you have three parameters, x, y, and rotation. So let's, let's do the rotate, right? So we, we don't want to duplicate, we, we don't connect this as a separate one, right? So we bring this in, geometry. We need to give it an angle, right? So we talked about radians and degrees last time. So if you go on radians, you can give it the degrees. So we want a slider, slider from 0 to 360, yeah? 0 to 360. And we don't want them in, in decimals, right? So let's do n. N means uh, real number. So sorry, it means integer, of course. Yeah. So it means a number without any decimals, right? And we can connect it here. Connect it to here. I don't.
Yeah, so now, if you do this, I'll give you five minutes to follow later in a bit. So, I can control the rotation and the position, right, of my building here, okay? And all of this ladybug does in real time, the analysis, right? So, if I move this here, you can see the mesh darkens. If I move it here, it lightens because it has more access, yeah? So. This building is facing north, so it doesn't really matter if I have it or not. But if I delete it, this is gonna say uh, I, I had, you know, it's gonna say there's a missing rep from the reference ones, right? So if that happens, just go back, select, and right-click multiple reps again, right? Okay. It's it's rotates, just rotates. It's the first one that comes up, this one. Rotate an object in a plane. Yeah. So, okay, it's worth, it's worth talking about the... Um, so, if you go on the Ladybug, Ladybug Tools website, okay, today we only did sunlight analysis, okay? So, we learned that it uses EPW, and then you can analyze geometries with it, okay? So, if you go here on Ladybug Tools, it gives you the four butterfly, uh, dragonfly, honeybee, ladybug. The four plugins or the four, four families within ladybug tools. And if you click on them, my internet seems not, not to work, but. And you go and see, see example files. So, okay, we'll, we'll take a five minute break. But in the meantime, I want you to go on ladybug tools. Not in your break, after your break or later on. And then you can find example files for each of these components. So each of these are things you can do in Grasshopper, right? You go on there, and you have access to the um, you have access to the file, and it tells you, it gives you an example file as well, right? So if you're doing a psychometric chart, or you want to do view studies of a room, or if you want to do radiation studies of your sites, yeah, sun path, solar axis studies, you have all the basic setup here done for you, okay? You already know how to use one. You pretty much need, yeah, you just have to apply the same principles to all of the different plugins, okay? So if you want to understand all the possibilities of Ladybug, go on this website later on, okay? We'll take a five minute break for a breather and my, my throat is a bit sore. And then we'll come back, okay? Okay, so let's carry on. Um, so what we've done is we've, we've done a sunlight analysis on sunlight hour analysis on our object, okay? So what we're gonna do, I mentioned earlier that not every plugin is a separate thing, right? You can combine them, okay? So what we're gonna do is connect it to Galapagos and then originally the algorithm and let it, and help us figure out where the best position to maximize sunlight for this object, right? So this is not the only application, think about it. So if you have, if you have something where you're exploring voids and views in voids or how to let sunlight in through voids, maybe you wanna explore the position of those voids, right? Um, I think we did this in the CPU last time, right? Where to position voids based on the views, right? So this is another application, okay? It's not sophisticated, it's a very dumb script because it's a position on the side, right? But I want you to think about what further applications you can have for your own project, yeah? So, Galapagos is native, so all I have to do is um, get it up, Galapagos here. Yeah. 
So Galapagos works in a different way, right? So rather than do this, this won't work. You have to connect from Galapagos outwards. Okay, so the, the way it works is an evolutionary algorithm. So what it does is it seeks to take your parameters, change them randomly, and give you different options, okay? How do you know which option works best? You need to have something called a fitness score, okay? So in our case, a fitness score, or the best option, is to maximize the sunlight hours, okay? So, so here, if I take, if I take this building, um, move it here, this is not us maximizing the sunlight hours, right? Because we don't get any sunlight hours here. Right? But if we move it here, this does maximize, it, it performs better, right? So Galapagos can help us explore which ones work better. Right? So what you want to do is you want to get a, um, a node called mass addition. And you want to add all your results. So remember I said earlier, this is the result for each point, okay? So by adding them all up, I can get the total amount of sunlight hours um, hitting each point on the surface. Yeah. So this is 16,900. If, if I move this below, I expect this to be reduced, right? So now this is 15,000, okay? So less total amount of sunlight hours hitting all the points together, okay? So this is what I want to maximize. I connect it to the fitness here. Okay. Gino is our parameters or the genes, the range of the genes, right? So genes here refers to the, the, the differences between the iterations, right? So, so how things branch out, right? Over here. So different genes gives you different outcomes when you have some things that are similar, some things that are different. And hopefully you can relate this idea to here, right? So things here can be similar and things here can be similar. So these have similar genes, these have different genes, okay? Similar genes, similar parameters, different genes, different parameters. Yeah. So here we want to connect to the parameters we made. So rotation, you have to hold down shift to connect them all, okay? So, we want to test these genes to maximize our fitness score, okay? And then you can double click on the Galapagos icon, it gives you this interface. Okay. Is it working? Everyone following? Yeah, perfect, okay. So we mentioned the word maximize earlier, right? So if we want to maximize daylight, sunlight hours, we keep it on maximize. If we want to minimize, which doesn't make sense in this context, we can change it to minimize, right? But there's always one goal or one optimum. This is what this algorithm does. It seeks to find the optimal solution by changing a lot of different parameters, okay? So then you can go on solvers, make sure this is a uh, use revolutionary solver. So here you need to make sure you have a large grid size, otherwise it'll be sl slow. So imagine every time you change a slider, Ladybug does the analysis again, okay? So you want it to do it in a, a matter of milliseconds. You don't want it to do it in two, three seconds each iteration, right? Because what we're gonna do, this, this component is gonna help us change parameters quickly. So make sure you have a large grid size. I don't know how else to make this clear. Make sure you have a large grid size, right? So if you see segmentation on your surface, that's good. If it's smooth and smooth gradient, that's bad. You need to increase, okay? And then you wanna hit, hit click solver, yeah? So you can see what it's doing now. It's changing all these different parameters. It's starting off completely random, okay? So let's try this, let's try that. It's giving you different outputs. And with time, it'll converge, okay? So it knows that this area here will never get a good amount of sunlight. So it stops using the parameters 
that takes the building over here, right? So you can see this is what the convergence means here, okay? So you'll see that it'll maximize the y, and with the x, it's, it's more, it's playing around the 1,300 mark here, right? So one meter, whatever here. So this position is shaping up to be the best position. And with the rotation, you see it's getting slower. At the beginning, it was very random, but now it's converging on 160 degrees, right? So at the moment, based on the solver, this is the best area. So now, now we get into the idea of having genes, right? So these genes here are the ones it's trying to test. Okay. Have a question? If our building goes like very far away, which one? If your building goes very far away, it means you haven't restricted your slider. Yeah? I have a restriction on the slider here. So on the Y, it will never go above 2,000. Okay? The most optimal solution is to take this building and place it in the middle of nowhere. But that's not a design option for us. We need to limit our slider. So double click on the slider, give it the minimum and maximum that fits within your site. Yeah? So every time, every time you see this plus, it means it found, it's found a better solution. Now this can go on for hours. Um, you can stop the solver. Over here on the right, it gives you different iterations, okay? So if I highlight all the iterations, we have th three sliders, right? So one axis, second axis, third axis. The Y component is this one. So you can see a higher Y means a better result. That's why it's iterating here. A middle X, so that's why it's iterating here. And the degree is 160, this 360, so it's iterating it. Okay? So after a while, he knows that this is a rough area he needs to test. Okay? You can click on the different instances here, right? So this, if, if I click reinstate, this is the best performing instance. Okay? If I go all the way down to the bottom, click on this, this is the worst. Reinstate. That's the worst solution we have yeah? for our problem. Okay? So through this process, it's literally tested a thousand different iterations. Yeah, it can be more, it can be slightly less. The idea is it tests all the different possibilities sometimes, okay? And then you can assess, right? So you can reinstate and you can see all the different iterations, right? So it's ranked by best to worst. As a designer, you need to be a bit critical here, right? This is not a solution for all your design problems. You don't design this way but it can help you explore opportunities and ideas, right? So, again, I mentioned earlier, whether there's a void, you want to think about where to place it in your building. If it's a circulation uh, strategy you have and you want to find out where the most fluent and where the best flows into your buildings are. Environmental analysis, how your facade performs and affecting the size of panels on your facade, right? There's a lot more different applications, right? If I gave you this exercise in the beginning, most of you would have placed the building over here, right? So it's not really a difficult problem for us to use an evolutionary algorithm for. Huh? For us to demonstrate the point to you, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. Galapagos, I'm not a big fan of Galapagos because it's a optimization solution. I'm a, I'm a big fan in terms of it's helping you iterate, right? So you can actually save out all these outputs, yeah? And you can visualize them this way. Okay. So you can rank best to worst. And then as a designer, although that might be the most per best performing iteration, using your design skills, maybe it's not your final iteration. Right? Maybe you decide this actually works better because the geometry is more suitable and this is restricting in terms of flows or masses, whatever. Right? So don't take it literally. Make sure you're critical about it. I wouldn't use Galapagos in your design projects a lot. Maybe use it in an aspect or two to help you understand something. Well, the principle, the, the main idea behind the tutorial today is to know how to use Ladybug. And that, you can combine plugins. It's not just one thing does one thing and you ignore the rest, OK? So that's the end of our tutorials. Any, any question? Yeah? How to output all these results? 
Okay, so you can do it manually, okay? So here, if you go here, reinstate, okay? Go back here. Click on OK. No, you can't do it manually. Okay, so let's do this again. So you need you need the you need the a, a node called um, record. Okay, here. It's called data recorder. So this one saves all the changes in your data. So whenever you change you change a parameter, it will save the previous iteration, right? So you want to connect that to your geometry. So let's say it's this. You want to copy this and you want to connect it to uh, to this here. Yeah. So this is giving me giving me the score of daylight analysis per each each geometry, right? So when when you run this again here, start solver. I'm starting this again, right? As soon as it does one iteration or one group of iterations, I'll stop it. So here I can stop it. I click OK. This saved all the different iterations for me. OK. So now I have a list. Uh, Okay. I actually did this wrong, so let me let me do this again. So I need to start with the new record data because I copied this one and already saved some of the ref information. Okay. So I do this to cancel it or clear it here. XX. Go again. Start solver. And now it's beginning to explore, right? Um, so the idea is that I'm saving all the outputs in the data recorder in terms of geometries and saving all the outputs in terms of score. Okay. So here I can stop. And you can see I have a lot of geometries here because list item helps me choose an item in a list. Okay. So I want to turn, let's do this, brep. I want to turn this off. Uh, sorry, I want to turn this off. Yeah. So here. So this is iteration number 50. This is iteration number 0, number 5, number 16. Okay. Well, this is all the different iterations. And over there, 15,423. Those are all the different scores for the iterations. Yeah. Okay. So I can do, I can add another script to this. Have a grid. Take each iteration, put it in a point in the grid, and then I can have a text to the score. You can do this in graphics. You don't have to do it somewhere else. Yeah. So you have all the data there to, to do it. Okay. Does that make sense? Make sense? Yeah. Okay. Any other questions, clarifications? No. Okay. So that's the end for today. You're free to free to leave. I think the next tutorial is uh, Revit. Is that right? Revit here. So next to you is Revit here next week. Um, Jason will issue the link and then you can sign up again. Okay. Thank you.